Ken Anderson from Seed Boulder. Yes, hi. Uh, thank you for the presentations. Uh, uh, they were, helped me uh, orient myself about the whole topic. Um, I'm here with colleagues at CU Boulder from our Information Science Department and our Atlas Institute. And our goal is to hopefully develop a plan that spans all three units. And I was wondering if you could comment on the pros and cons of having a unit level plan for faculty to plug into versus faculty from all three units plugging into a plan that spans all three units. That's actually, that's a really good question. Um, we, it, it somewhat depends on your, like who from your institution is applying to size, right? So if it makes sense that across uh, these three units that they're all applying to size and they all have some similar issues, I think that having a unit level, a plan at that level makes a lot of sense because it doesn't matter whether you're in information or in uh, computing or whatever, you're all kind of doing the same thing. Because it's important to note that this BPC requirement does not apply, for example, if I'm a computer engineer who applies, this is a little strange, but for example, if you apply to cyber physical systems on the engineering side, then you don't necessarily need a BPC plan, but if you apply on the size side, you do. So it's really more about where you're applying than it, in some ways it's what unit you're associated with. Um, you also have to navigate how the internal structures of your institution work and whether people actually can collaborate across colleges. But assuming that, I think um, having one plan makes a lot of sense. Okay, thank you. How do I pay for this? So as part of my project plan, I have some BPC activities that might be in my departmental plan. How do I pay for those if those have some cost? Uh, you can, at the time of award, ask your program officer for funding for, and that's on top of whatever the limit is. So if you have a $1.2 million limit and you need $50,000 to do what you uh, are proposing for your BPC activity, you can uh, ask for that. And at award time, we can negotiate that. Um, in terms of funding departmental activities more broadly, there's not necessarily a direct mechanism for that, but uh, we certainly are willing to consider ideas that folks thought that that was something that was necessary. Jeff, one of the questions that came up uh, related to the legality of quotas and affirmative action, and so thinking mm -hmm. about, so say I was saying that our incoming graduate students are gonna be half women, or say I was gonna say our income, we're targeting that our incoming uh, faculty hires were gonna be half women. Um, can you do, Margaret or Jeff, do you want to weigh in on that? Um, we want to make sure we're providing really clear guidance to folks so that we are not getting in legal trouble. I could argue from lots of people clearly do this, right? So lots of places can have goals of, we'd like to make our program uh, have, we'd like to make sure that the computer science program has the same gender breakdown as our college of engineering. That is clearly something, a goal that is a reasonable goal that there's lots of examples of people doing and to my knowledge, uh, have not run into any legal trouble. But uh, Margaret, I'm sorry, since you're the boss, do you want to I'm, I'm not a lawyer either, obviously. <laughs> uh, I think that having um, sort of hard and fast quotas uh, wouldn't be a great approach in general, yeah. um, but having goals to align with the population demographics of um, the US population or the population of the undergrads in the region your university draws from, those are all reasonable aspirations to include 
we've got a few more questions, one of which is, um, Jeff, you had a slide that listed some things that a BPC plan should include. Those were specifically for project BPC plans. Uh, and you'll hear more later today about BPC net has, has the requirements for a departmental plan. Um, and one thing I'd add there is at NSF, we only review your project plan. Um, there is the departmental plan is a resource that you're providing for your PIs, uh, for your faculty. Um, we accept project, we accept proposals from faculty, not from departments. So uh, we see the departmental plans as being a resource. And I want to put in a, a plug from uh, Frida went from MIT that, um, like, from MIT Legal Counsel, the recommendations that we just heard from Jeff regarding, like, quota quotas and goals might be tricky. And, and so I think just like that is helpful information for us. Um, and Frito, maybe we can even work with MIT Legal Counsel to make sure that we're providing people better advice, because I think that that could cause a real setback. Um, can I ask a few more questions from the chat? So one is whether or not how to think about international students or uh, non-American uh, folks who in these plans, and then the other question was thinking about, should these activities assume a, a virtual environment given COVID? Okay, so two questions are up on deck, international students and should everything be virtual? Okay, so the virtual one, I'll take that one first because that's easier. Uh, uh, that depends on your institution. You uh, get to this, your institution decide what the policies are about virtual or not. I mean, one would expect that if you were going to do something in the fall that it's likely to be virtual, but that's uh, somewhat up to you. Okay, so this quote we have is that the BPC activities must seek to increase the representation of the underrepresented groups in the US computing and information science and engineering workforce. So for example, if you decided to uh, focus on primarily on your international undergrads that could be plausible. You, you need to address, you do need to address underrepresented groups, um, but we have not put in any specific restriction about uh, international students other than saying that, for example, if you decided to go to Brazil and work with female students, that might not uh, be BPC activity, for example. Jeff, the next question that came up was asking about scope um, in terms of sort of person months or sort of amount of time. What are you expecting from the NSF for each of the PI's contribution to BPC? Uh, we do not have any minimum. Uh, there needs to be some meaningful amount. Uh, that could be anything from, for example, if you decide you're going to incorporate inclusive pedagogy in your courses, that you know is taking quite a bit of time. You're doing something. Some people might instead say, "I'm going to go to some ongoing uh, activity and I'm going to present in front of a number of students." But that might be a one-time thing. If that one-time event has some way of establishing that that's likely to burn participation in computing, that could be a viable option. Reviewers are the ones who determine whether it's meaningful or not. I see two hands are raised. Um, Curtis from University of Washington. Are uh, sort of income-based marginalized populations relevant for this? Things just like low-income populations broadly, or are the categories given earlier um, uh, I guess the, the key ones. So what we say is um, we have those categories. This is a really common and good question. So we have these categories where we have this uh, long-standing underrepresentation document that we have. We highly encourage activities that may also include low-income, rural, or other underserved uh, population, but that's in addition to not in place of the populations that we describe. And I will note that 
in high, it is highly likely that there is some substantial intersection between, for example, low income and the uh, five groups you mentioned before, right? Uh, it's quite possible that you could have low income women or low income African Americans. Uh, how about Mark from FIU then? Uh, you'd mentioned uh, you can ask for DPC funds in addition to the project award at award time. Is that then considered a, a, a normal supplement and comes out of the normal supplement cap or is that a separate? It's, it's, it will be part of your original award amount. It's not, a, it would not be a supplement, it would be part of your original award. Oh, okay, okay, interesting, okay, thanks. Yeah, there's a question here uh, from Samuel Cho. Uh, what happens if a BPC plan is deemed not meaningful? It was already said that it would not affect overall rating and award recommendation. So, very good question. So if, it's, if your plan's not meaningful, then that means you need to make it meaningful prior to you receiving an award. So it does not affect whether you get an award, but it will make your and your program officer's life much easier if like you had a meaningful plan because then you could uh, spend your time talking about that instead. Whatever is related to your research as opposed to trying to work with the education workforce group to try to come up with a meaningful plan under a very short time crunch. You want to do Jacob from ICSI? Uh, I work at a small nonprofit research institution and we're not affiliated with university sy the system. And so we don't have access to like classroom sizes or teaching or any of the things that the BPC has been suggesting we look at for how to include groups. So other than just saying like, oh, we, we might try to hire a person from an underrepresented group to perform the proposed research. How, how can I find a space that's not broader impacts, but does broaden participation without like, for example, setting a quota for who we're gonna hire? There are a lot of different paths that people go down. One thing, for example, we see some, not often enough, but sometimes people will try to make sure that the work they do in their research is accessible to persons with disabilities, right? That is like, that counts as a thing that you might do. Um, so that, or that their actual lab itself is accessible to students with disabilities, as an example. The things that you do within your uh, institution to make it more inclusive matter for the researchers who work there, even if they're not students. So that is, so departmental development absolutely applies to the work that you do as much as it does to any university. So it does not have to be at all in classrooms. This, this is um, a popular question in the chat and uh, we can throw out, there are other ways of getting involved at the national level. So the extent to which your professional organization, whatever SIG you've got or whatever equivalent group you've got, thinking about volunteering to help them adopt inclusive practices for running conferences, that can be hugely impactful. And so particularly as a small nonprofit, you're like, we don't have a lot of humans uh, in our space, we can maybe have the most impact if we're in we're volunteering at the national level. And there we've got resources on bpcnet.org. And then there's additional resources that I know of that I can uh, share with you on the Slack channel. A question about international students. How about recruiting students, interns, et cetera, via international programs? Does it matter whether we're focusing on recruitment from people who are already in the United States? I guess, as I said earlier, um, they need to seek to increase representation of these groups in the U.S. size workforce. So if that, many people uh, were, you know, immigration, <laughs> I think about say is, you know, a good thing. I, like <laughs> it is, uh, and so it's completely reasonable that someone might uh, be a graduate student and come here and then end up uh, being part of the computing research workforce. That's a good thing. You do not necessarily have to focus your recruitment on people who are already in the United States. That said, uh, reviewers might ask why you can't. Um, so that is something that you might want to make clear that 
you know, how are you addressing effectively broadening participation in computing? You don't have to address all problems. We do not expect that a science research project is going to address all societal problems and uh, make it so that we have completely equitable uh, pathways. But it'd be nice to understand why you're going the direction that you do. Question from Ellen, uh, do if my unit already has over 50% women representation, undergraduate, master's, PhD, can we propose to have an even higher representation for BPC or should we focus on other underrepresented populations? This is a great question because this is a cousin to the question, which is if I work at a minority serving institution, am I allowed to, uh, do I have to work on a group other than my group? And the answer is, if your unit already has 50% women representation, you are absolutely allowed to uh, focus on women. And if you're at a minority serving institution or a women's college, you are absolutely allowed to focus on that group that is already potentially the majority at your institution. So no, there is no restriction uh, that says you have to focus on some other unrepresented population. Can I just follow up? I, I think this aligns well with some of the questions before about goals and quotas and stuff. It's useful to track data to know where you are. I'm an experimentalist. I like knowing where I am through data. Um, I don't think it's useful to get so bogged down in numbers uh that it takes you away from the holistic goal right and so um focus on the holistic goals and as and i 100 percent agree with what jeff said you know if you're if you feel like holistically you're in good shape in some ways and less good shape in other ways then the bpc plan should be reflective of that as your main context we have one more question which is like um, you know, to what extent do we have evidence of the effectiveness of the NSF's initiative for BPC to date? We are early. Uh, we are currently looking at some of the first annual reports that include reporting on what they did in their BPC plan. That is, we have a whole set of people who are looking into this, uh, reviewing your wonderful annual reports and seeing uh, what, how you talk about your BBC activities. Um, as I mentioned before, we did look at least at how are people doing in, how are the PIs doing in terms of submitting? Are people submitting plans? That was key. And are those plans getting better? Are people submitting plans? Yes. Are those plans getting better? That's not clear currently. Uh, we have not have our final data on that, but Part of the reason why we have these departmental requirement, uh, sorry, we're suggesting that departments have these BPC plans is that we think that the real way of making change is likely going to come through departments. So we're hoping that that will make a difference. But any feedback that you all have on how this is impacting what you're doing would be very helpful to hear as well. Um, and how, perhaps the BBC requirement can be made to be, uh, to complement your existing efforts. If you're trying to do something that's addressing underrepresentation, how can the BPC pilot complement what you're doing there? Beth uh, Pale has a question. Yes, Beth Pale, Indiana University. And I just wanted to echo what a couple people had said in, um, who's the target audience of BPC activities. And so NSF has a, a history of, like in the graduate fellowship of funding um, US citizens or, or nationalized citizens or, or, or whatnot. There's a, a very limited category, but what I'm hearing here is that we are targeting um, a broader group of, 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 of people um, on the idea that you know, Im, you know immigrant populations uh, are, are excellent in terms of contributing to the science of the country, but that is slightly inconsistent with um, NSF's typical stand on who can receive funding, what um, early career people can receive funding. So I think if you could just clarify relative to the NSF's typical stance, the, the 
distinction here. I think that that would be helpful for some of us. It is, I do admit it's a bit confusing. So to clarify, so for the graduate research fellowship, RU supplements and training ships, those are restricted to US citizens and permanent residents. Uh, if you put down graduate student or you put down undergraduate as a line in your uh, budget, those can be from anywhere, right? If they're a student, that student can be an international student without any permanent residence. We understand, I, I'm trying to be careful here, um, uh, that I, it might be difficult for some departments if they want to focus on graduate students to focus exclusively on US citizens and permanent residents. All we can say is that you have to seek to increase the representation of the underrepresented groups in the size US computer and information science and engineering workforce. That is different than what we might say for a PCASE award or other like congressionally mandated things. But primarily for most of NSF projects, if you are at a university, either working at or a student at, we don't, we, you can be funded. Good, thank you, that, that's helpful.